So what we're going to do here, the question is, can I go over a margin account and show SMA and excess equity? I certainly can. So the key to being able to do a margin question is to be able to do the initial setup and then what's called a mark to market. And for you to be able to do this, you're going to have to know the classical margin equation. I think the uh, best analogy is a house. Market value of the house minus mortgage on the house equals equity in the house. Right, so if I buy a thousand shares of forty, I'll play margin clerk. So that's forty thousand dollars in what we call long market value. I say, do you want to do this in your cash account or do you want to do this in your margin account? If you want to do this in your cash account, I'm going to need forty thousand dollars from it. You know, some accounts are required to be cash accounts. You say, Dean, I want to do it in my margin account. I, was, I say, okay, well, if you want to do this in your margin account, Reg T is fifty percent. So you're going to have to put up $20,000 in equity. Again, I think it's, uh, the house is the best analogy, right? That's your down payment on the house. And then uh, the broker-dealer will loan you $20,000. That's called the debit register or debit balance. And that's what you owe the brokerage firm. And so that's called the classical margin equation law. And so that's really important because if you don't know the classical margin equation long, you can't set up the question and then you can't do the mark. And the ledger entries come from the mark. So, you know, if the stock goes up, let's say the stock goes to 50. So let's just label this our initial setup. Boom. And again, my house analogy, now we're going to do what's called a mark to market, right? If the house goes up in value, the mortgage doesn't change. You know, what changes is your equity in the house. So now we're going to do a mark to market and we're going to answer the questions that you asked, like what happens to SMA, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, so let's put here, it goes to 50. You know, remember in your house, if you have excess equity, the bank will loan you more money, right? So I call you and I say, hey, uh, you have $50,000 in long market value. $50,000 in long market value. You still owe the brokerage firm $20,000. And so your equity has gone up. Your equity is now 30000 Equity always represents what you would have if you close the account. Nobody's suggesting you do that, but that's what equity represents. And so if you close this account out, you would have $30,000 in equity. No loaning customers money is one of our all-time favorite things to do. And so what I want to do as a margin clerk is see if perhaps I can't loan you more money because that is one of our favorite things to do. So what I'm gonna compare uh, your equity to is 50% of the market value, which is called Reg T. And that's 50%. And when I compare uh, the $30,000 to half of the market value, Reg T, I say, hey, you're at risk for $30,000 and you only need to be at risk for 25, you have excess equity, more equity than you need. And, uh, you know, uh, we love it. We love to lend customers like you that pick stocks that go the right way, more money. Now, by the way, again, the key point is you gotta be able to do, you know, the classic margin equation, right? All right, so you have 5,000 in excess equity. 5000 in excess equity. You can either have that as cash or you can use it to buy additional securities. My fear would be buy additional securities. Right? So, you know, here the test question would be, what is the effect on the various ledger entries? Please note, they might say something like, all the following ledger entries are affected except. And please note, the one ledger entry that was not affected was the debit register. All these others have changed. As I said, you can have this as cash. If you want right now, I'll send you $5,000. Or you can buy $10,000 worth of securities. 
And you say, Dean, do I have to do something today? If I told you that you had to use this excess equity today, you might use it in a way that's not in your best interest. I said, well, no, if you don't want to do anything today, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a special memorandum to your account that on today you had more than you needed. I'm going to create a holding tank for that excess equity. Now, I don't think on the test you would have any problem if you thought of excess equity and SMA as one and the same. They're not actually, but I don't think that would cause you any problems. Right? If you just thought of excess equity and SMA as being the same. And then two times your SMA is what we call your buying power. And so uh, the question is, what makes your SMA go up? It's when the market moves in your favor, right? So not understanding how to get the SMA. The SMA is a function of marking to market. So you mark to market, and that's where that excess equity comes from. Uh, what increases it and decreases it? Well, it doesn't go down. If I take the mark back, let me just put this here. So, Andy, I'm going to take the mark. Now the stock, because the stock moves, right? Uh, by the way, we can get rid of this, right? That's yesterday's news. Uh, we can get rid of that because that's yesterday's news. And let's say the stock goes back to 40. So how do you lose SMA? The only way you lose it is by using it. To lose your SMA, you have to, uh, you know, have used it. So here again is the stock back at the long market value. Uh, boom. Uh, you still now owe the brokerage firm 20. And Andy says, Dean, I wish I would have used my SMA. I like it at 40. I didn't like it at uh, 50, but I like it at 40. Damn, I wish I still had my SMA. I said, well, you still do, my friend. That's the whole point of making the SMA entry. If we didn't make that SMA entry, you would not have this available to you. So now as a margin clerk, boom, boom. And now that's zero. But now what we do is we bring the SMA forward. Right, so you still have 5,000 SMA here. That's going to come forward. That's the only thing that you know, keeps coming day to day. Now, you don't get a mark, Andy, when it goes up again. You got to get past your high water mark to get a new entry. So until, until the stock goes past 50, no new SMA. Uh, decreases SMA. I answered that. What it decreases it is using it, using it. Well, <laughs> Options, <laughs> you know, options are, you know, there's nine option strategies with nine different break evens. So, you know, uh, yeah, I think for test purposes, there's exceptions that Andy, for example, if you're like restricted, you sell stock, I'll credit your SMA. But for, yeah, for test purposes, I think you'd be fine to think of excess equity as SMA. You can't get SMA without having excess equity. So SMA is the holding tank for the previous entries that were excess equity. So I'm telling you that I think on the test, this would not cause you any damage to think of this. And this is one of the same. They're not actually, but you know, when, I don't think you'd miss any questions. Um, I'm not sure, Mary Stella, about options, max loss, max gain. I mean, the, you know, I got 15 minutes before I start teaching a 60 degree class. Can you be a little more particular? Is there a particular strategy that you would like me to show you the uh, break-evens on? 